Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making an etched wine glass. I'm going to go through it from start to finish, how to design your stencil, how to apply your stencil to your glass in the most effective way and how to apply the etching cream so that you get a nice clear and even etch throughout your design. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. first step in etching on a glass is to make yourself a little stencil so what you'll need to do is get some text on the screen for whatever you want your glass to say and in this case it has to say Sue's Fizz I've already got the font up here that I'm going to be working with today and it's called Pacifico now I can't remember if this is a Cricut font or if this is one that I've picked up on Defont so I'll see if I can find out for you but if not just check on your system and see if you've got it already in Cricut Design Space. If you have, then it's a Cricut font, but otherwise get it from defont.com. So this one is, um, as I said, Pacifico. I'm going to just mess about with my line spacing here. I am going to make two separate stencils for this particular glass because what I find is if I'm doing wording and it's two lines, when you're trying to put down the two separate layers of vinyl, you will end up with an overlap that sometimes you will end up inadvertently with wrinkles and it makes it difficult and sometimes it causes the etching cream to bleed. So I'm going to do it as two separate lines. So the first thing I've done is just ungrouped two lines through the advanced menu at the top. Now I'm just going to sort out my letter spacing. So I just want to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to attach that I onto the Z as well because even though this isn't actually a cursive font, um, the end of that eye, I just don't really like it. Seeing as the others are rounded, I don't like that. But thinking about it, what I might do is just pop a little tiny circle onto the end of the ones that have got that on them. The E's the same. And I just don't like that on there. So I'm just going to make myself a rounded end just to put on there. And then I should just weld those two together once I've got them in the place I want it to be. So that's a little trick for you if you um, if you want to change a font somehow and you don't like the way it looks, change it yourself. So that looks fine to me now. And I'm just going to do the same with this S up here. Well, let's use this this time and see if it makes a difference. I've got the S and the E to do here. So let's just make that nice and small I'm just going to turn that around so it's going to fit onto there that looks perfect to me let's do another one so let's just duplicate that I'm just in a quick copy and paste just to duplicate that and then I'll just rotate that round a li little bit more again. It just makes it look the same then as the rest of the font which I don't know why they would have it like that but it's personal preference I guess. So that is fine. Now I'm happy with the ends of my writing and I'm also happy that this is separate here. What I'm going to do is just move the fizz out of the way and I'm going to get a basic square shape and I'm just going to stretch that out and pop it over the top there I'm actually going to send it to the back as well just by right clicking I do want a bit of extra around my design because I don't want to be um, worrying that I'm going to get etching cream on the glass so a little bit of extra never ever hurts and then let's just do that the same with the fizz so we could probably just duplicate that one and drop it down a bit perfect so let's just pop that there let's send that to the back also it's a bit slow isn't it come on send to back right there we go so let's move sue up a touch and then we've got fizz here Right, let's just get that centred. And again, let's do that as a centre. 
Right, so that is perfect. That's exactly how we want it to be. What I'm going to do now is just select one of the squares and one of the lines of writing, come down to the bottom and, collect and click on a slice. Okay, that one is done. Let's do the same again with the top one. So just select the two layers and slice them. Slice will only work on two layers. So if you have score lines or anything like that incorporated in your design, you will need to hide them using these little eyes on the right hand side because even just something as simple as having an additional score line on your screen will stop your slice from working. So now you can see we've got these two additional layers that have come up. In fact, there's four additional layers because it takes out the middles of the actual rectangle that we've got on there as well. So you've got the fizz that we wrote, you have the slice result with our stencil result, and then you've also got the fizz that's come out of that middle and the same for Sue. So what we can do now is just move these words out of the way and we don't need them. So we can literally just delete those. Let's try and just move that, there we go. So we can, again, we've got two layers there, so we can just drag over them and just get rid of those. So these are your two stencils now. So now what I need to do is just get these two so that they are aligned to the centre. Okay, so these are our two lines of text. And what I'm going to do now is just select all and I'm going to shrink this down to be the size that I want it to be for my actual glass. Now, text wise, I've got about four to five centimeters to play with, but of course we've got all this additional vinyl on here. So we don't need to be too accurate about our sizing at this stage, because if you grab another square, for instance, and you were to make it four centimeters by maybe five in height, that's the size that we were going to do on there, but it's, you know, because it's a line, it will be okay. So we can make it a little bit smaller. So let's just select everything again and just pull it down to there. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's going to give me a little bit of overflow, but I am happy with that. So now what we need to do, I'm just going to zoom in a touch, is get these cut out onto two pieces of stencil vinyl and then we can start working on the actual etching. So this is just a champagne flute from Wilco. I think these are 60 pence each and it's quite a thick one, so it's a good one for etching on. And then I've just got my etchal etch cream that I've used in previous videos, a lollipop stick to apply with, I've got some stencil vinyl. This is the actual stencil vinyl that came with my kit from MDP Supplies. I've got some eye goggles because it's important to wear these when you are etching in case of any splashes because this stuff is acidic. Don't forget, it is taking off the top layer of this glass and in order to do that, it is quite corrosive. So it's very important that you're working in a well ventilated area with your safety equipment. You could also use gloves as well. Um, and then I've just got a piece of paper to put my used lolly stick on when I have finished applying. So first things first, we just need to actually cut out our stencils. So I'm just going to grab a mat, just using a light grip today because this is quite a new one as well. Just got a piece of vinyl here that I have obviously had a chunk out of previously. I'm just going to pop that whole thing onto there. I'm just going to grab my brayer and just use that to smooth it out, make sure it's nicely applied onto there. All right, so let's just hop back into design space and just look at our design. So we've got that on there. It's obviously going to cut out into two pieces. So if we go through to make it now, we can arrange that for our mat. So we can either do it across the top or we can do it um, underneath each other. I am actually going to do it underneath each other. Uh, you can see it's a basic cut on the left hand side, just one mat. Material size doesn't really matter on this occasion and we don't need to mirror. So just click on continue. I'm going to now go over to browse all materials and if you type in stencil here you will get the three different options that are available. I'm going to choose the bottom one which is stencil vinyl and then I'm going to click on done and I'm going to change my pressure to more because my blade is a little bit dull and probably could do with replacing. 
So now I'm just going to hop over to my machine, put my mat in and we'll start the cut. Alright, so as you can see the button is flashing for the insert mat, so that's ready. So let's just insert our mat, just using my fine point blade today. So we don't need to change any of that sort of stuff around. So on the screen it's now telling us to um, just press the go button, so let's do that. And that is done so let's now just check that it has cut so I'm just going to grab a weeding tool and I'm just going to lift up at the corner of where my stencil is and as you can see that's cut perfectly so we can eject the mat if that hadn't have cut I would have just pressed the go button again and just given it a second pass over there so and so what I'm going to do is weed on the mat today so this is the corner with our design in so I'm just going to turn it around so that I'm not touching too much of the actual design and what I'm going to do is cut off the additional vinyl around the outside with our craft knife okay I'm going to get rid of that off of the mat just so we can see exactly where we are got a little bit of a outline around my two pieces of stencil so just take that off to start with now it's a bit strange when you are weeding this because of course normally we'd be taking away all of this outer part but that's actually the part we want to keep on this occasion so I'm going to just grab my pin pen because I need that for the intricacy of this design and I'm just going to pull out each of the letters So that's the weeding done, it's super quick and easy to do. Now what we're going to need to do is just clean the glass with some alcohol. You can either use rubbing alcohol, um, some people use nail varnish remover, um, you can either use that or some people actually even use hand sanitizer. I was reading the other day which I thought was really interesting. Um, I use these little fast aid um, swabs that these are actually what I use for when I'm doing my nails with gel polish because it's just what I use to take off the tacky layer of the top coat but you can use it for this as well so I'm going to do that today just grab one and I'm going to give it a good wipe all the way over because you can never guarantee which bit you're going to put it on can you so give it a good old clean all the way over and then we'll just let that dry. It will take a couple of seconds literally to dry because obviously the alcohol just evaporates. So I'll just bring my mat back. I'm going to get this off of the mat now. Let's just flip it over. Let's get that off there. All right then, so the next step is to put your design onto some transfer paper. So I'm just going to pop this on here and I want to make sure that I've got this as straight as possible here so what I'm going to do first of all is actually cut off the tops of my design so I've got my scissors and I'm just going to trim that off as close to the design top as I can and this is just to aid with getting it all straight when we're putting it on to the glass so let's just trim that one off as well off the fizz so I'm just lining up now with the lines on my cutting mat at the bottom and this line here just so that I can make sure that the top of this piece of transfer paper is going to be nice and straight just to allow me to align my stencil nice and straight along the top. So now we know that is perfectly square, let's get our sew. And let's just pop that on there as well. And then we can just cut that off here. That's perfect. Okay, so now I want to get a scraper and just give it a good burnish down on both sides. And then just do the same on that one. So I've already cleaned my glass with my alcohol wipe and I'm just going to grab a couple of rulers now just to stabilise my glass. So let's just pop that. There's a bit of transfer paper stuck to that. Look how rude. Okay, 
so that is on there so there's various ways that you can line up now that people use you can either fill it with water and stand it up and do it that way i've seen people draw lines on with um like dry white markers and stuff like that as well it's another way of doing it um i just like to line up my vinyl with the top of the glass really and just do it really simply that way um this can take a bit of time so just take your time and do it you know to please yourself really so i'm just going to try that now so i've just got my line of my vinyl at the top and i'm just going to pop it on okay so when you've got it on what you want to do is just go straight down the middle with your fingers and rub out and the same on the other side you try you need to try not to get any wrinkles in your vinyl but let's just peel back the transfer paper first and then we can work with the vinyl on its own rather than with the transfer paper attached to it so what i like to do now is just press down where i need to and if i need to lift it in order to get it to go flat that's what i will do stretching of the vinyl is what will cause wrinkles around the edges and just be aware of that if you do have a problem getting a bit to stick down like this is probably going to be a problem here where there's a little bit of a kink in that vinyl but what we're going to do is give it a little bit of heat in a minute just warm it up and hopefully the glue on the back of there will melt to the glass and hold it down nicely the rest of it looks pretty good so there's no other wrinkles i would recommend because i've done quite a few of these glasses now is to leave this on here for about 30 or 40 minutes just until it's happy and it's stuck down well and the reason I say that is it just gives the glue time to stick really I did used to just do it straight away but I found you know with practice and things like that that it just needs that extra time for the glue to become really really sticky onto the glass mm -hmm. next what I do is just turn my glass inside out and I have a look and see if I've got any spaces and I can see I've got a big air bubble forming just by this apostrophe here I don't know if you can really see it on the camera but you can see there's an air bubble there everything else looks pretty good it's not bad at all so what I'm going to do is just try and get that air bubble pushed out there and just make sure that that's well stuck down and then I'm going to pop this glass on my radiator and I'm going to let it heat up this glue on this actual vinyl and just let it adhere to the glass really really well this is another squeegee that I like to use for this this is actually the one that comes in the kit for the etching and it's quite a flexible one so it's a good one to have on hand and I've just pushed that air bubble out of there so now that is nice and flat so I just want to heat this up a little bit on the radiator as I said just to get it nice and warm and then we will start with the etching so I've just applied the second layer of the stencil onto there and it's overlapping nicely with the other one and there are no air bubbles in the fizz which is amazing I'm quite happy with how that's gone on there I'm just a bit worried about this little tiny bit here it keeps lifting so I am going to give it a bit more heat just to make sure that it is going to stick down properly and i'm going to pop it on the radiator to do that but if you have got a hairdryer or a heat gun but on very low don't put it on too hot because you might crack your glass um just do that and just get it warmed up nicely so that that glue is really well and truly activated and just keep using your little squeegee as well just to press out any lines that you want to get rid of just on your stencil make sure that it is nice and flat ready for etching all right then i think i'm ready to etch this now so it's been on the radiator it is lovely and warm and everything looks really well stuck down i'm just going to give it one more quick smooth down just to be certain but i think it is perfect the best way to look at this is on the back of the glass and just see if you've got any gaps or anything where your lettering is that you can see air bubbles or anything like that that's where you're going to struggle with it seeping out so just check it again double check and then we can pop on the etching cream so just while that was doing i just made a little cake topper um, if you're interested in seeing how to make this just drop me a comment down below and i will show you how i did it so i'm going to grab back my rulers again just to hold my glass in place and then i've got my actual got my goggles on already 
and I'm going to use my lollipop stick here just to apply it. I'm just going to open the etch all and I'm going to give it a little stir carefully and then I'm just going to grab some on here and I will just pop it onto there you don't need loads just a little bit this will do the whole thing so certainly don't need to get any more out and what you'll need to look for when you're etching is air bubbles so just be aware of air bubbles and air bubbles normally come with too much sort of movement and lifting up of it so once you've got it on there I tend to just maybe move it once or twice but I don't keep moving it and I do know that some people suggest that you keep moving it but from my own personal experience I don't do that I will leave this on for 10 minutes so I'll set my timer for 10 minutes and then that will be done and we'll get it all off at the end and see how it's gone so once I've got it on there and I'm happy that I've covered everything up I just scrape the excess back into the tub and just pop that down on my piece of paper pop the lid back on I am going to turn it over and just check to see if there's any visible seeping but I don't think there is and I'm also just checking for a nice even coverage and making sure that there's no air bubbles that I can see. If there's a few bits that look a little bit faint, I'm just going to move that over there and just make sure that there's a good coverage on the whole thing. Now I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and then once that's done we'll clean this off and I'll show you how to do right. that. And this is done now so that's had just over 10 minutes. I'm going to take it into the bathroom and just clean off all of this what I'm going to do first of all is try and scrape off as much of this as I can I'm just going to pop it back into my little jar so let's just go in there and give that a good clean off and make sure everything is washed off properly just washed off all of the etching cream from the glass just using some cold water and a wipe and all I'm going to do now is just peel back my piece of vinyl that I used for my stencil because I stuck it down and heated it up it has stuck really 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 well so it's a bit tough to get off it's torn as well so we just need to take off these little pieces the glass is still a bit wet as well so there's a bit of shadowing there but there's no seeping that I can see so the vinyl was attached really really well it looks absolutely great I am thrilled with how that looks it's really difficult to show an etched glass so that you can see it effectively but that gives you a really good idea as you can see there is a little line around there where the vinyl has been so I'm going to give it a good clean so I'm just going to grab another one of my um, fast aid wipes actually just give it a real good clean over so you can see that let's give it a good clean get rid of all those bits you can see that it looks like it's disappeared when it's wet but that's just purely because it's wet so now that's drying and you can see it says Sue's Fizz absolutely perfectly no seeping or any damage to any of the edges of that font it's absolutely perfect so i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have i'd love to see you again for the next one so don't forget to subscribe if you've learned something new today as well hit the like button i love to see if you've enjoyed the videos and all that's left to be said now is have a great week take care of yourselves and i'll see you soon bye